get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited. We have Cameron Harold. He's a former COO of 1-800-GOT-JUNK. He helped grow the company from $2 million to $106 million in only six years without any debt or outside funding, and he's helped build three $100 million companies. Today, he's a top-rated international speaker. He coaches CEOs on steps to multiply their revenue and profit. And he's the best-selling author of the book, Double Double, How to Double Your Revenue and Profit in Three Years or Less. And it's come out with, I think it's on its seventh printing. Cameron, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me, man. You've done your homework. Appreciate it. A lot of homework. So you have this great TED Talk. You know, Everyone should watch it. I think it was top 200 watch TED Talks of all time. Um, what did you do to help raise your kids to be entrepreneurs that we should also also do? I mean, I have a you know a two and a four year old, so tell me what should I be doing? Well, it's interesting. So, so my TED talk is actually about how I was raised as an entrepreneur, right. less about what I'm doing. So, yeah. um, but things like um, really working to build their confidence, yeah. um, working to build their speaking skills, so they're comfortable speaking in front of people teaching them to save half of the money that they ever earned so that, you know, they're, they're good at saving money as well as making money. Yeah. Um, teaching them to spot opportunities, teaching them to negotiate. So I won't give my kids an allowance, but if they spot things around the home that have to get done, we can negotiate on how much they want to get paid to do them. Right. And I end up saying, hey, I need you to do this. They don't get paid at all. But if they spot the opportunity and negotiate on so teaching them those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, Cameron, you know, being an entrepreneur – in business is simple, it's not necessarily easy. Um, what's been the lowest point and how you push through the tough times? Well, the lowest point probably for me was in um, August or September and I completely fell apart. I, um, I had a complete and utter totally nervous breakdown. One of my VPs tapped me on the shoulder and asked me if I was okay, and I collapsed on the floor of the elevator, sobbing, wow. and, and said, um, yeah, I'm okay. I went to a doctor about a week later and went for a physical, and I ended up having nine of the ten most stressful events happening simultaneously. You, my, my, you said something, I remember, about a metallic taste. What, yeah, what? so there was this metallic taste at the back of my neck. It almost was like I was chewing on tin foil or chewing on aluminum foil. Yeah, what was that? Into, it was a chemical secretion that's caused by stress. Really? And it turned out I was clinically redlining. Holy I was cow. Literally, literally on the edge. And um, so I, I changed stuff. I dropped 40 pounds and I stopped drinking constantly and I started getting more exercise and I started recognizing the signals of stress and trying to eliminate those. So was that just a wake up call for you? Like, what do you. It sounds um, it was, like a really hard time to just turn the, the, all that stuff around. Yeah, what was not, the wake-up call actually wasn't sobbing in the elevator. It was then being told by a doctor that the metallic taste was from stress. Mm. And I went, holy shit, like I'm only 35 years old and I'm clinically redlining. That's a scary place to be. Yeah. You know, a really scary place to be. So how would you change some of those habits? Because that's not so easy. You've been doing this, selling coat hangers, comic books since you were young. So it's like, how do you just turn, turn that off or turn it around? You start to, you start, I started to realize the symptoms and I would start to find myself in these patterns and I would recognize them. It's almost like I was having these out of body experiences and I would, I would watch myself or I would feel the metallic taste again or I would realize that I was manic. And so I'm, I became more introspective and intuitive, um, and emotionally intelligent with my roller coaster ride of, of the entrepreneur. I actually talk about the highs and lows of CEOs in the book. Yeah. And I just, I became more emotionally intelligent with that. So when that happens now, what do you like? You feel that warning sign. What do you do? It's funny because that's how Tim Ferriss and I actually met. Was he saw me do a speaking event around ten years ago about the highs and lows of CEOs? Mm-hmm. Asked me to write a guest blog about it. What I do now is I I de-stress. I go for a run. I go for a massage. Yeah. I 
I'm disconnected five o'clock. I don't work at night. Um, I realize that we're never going to get it all done. You know, we're never going to get our to-do list completed because we'll add more to our list tomorrow anyway. It's a bit of a lie trying to work, 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 work. And um, there's just a lot more things to be engaged in. So it's having hobbies and wanting to spend time with friends and family and enjoying the disconnects as much as I enjoy working. Yeah. So what is your hobby that you that helps you get disconnected? Yeah, I love golfing, love hiking, spending time with my kids, um, love cooking, love being around friends, love going to, you know, just other events. But hiking, tennis, skiing. Um, just came back from Whistler a couple of days at Whistler. Nice. So on the flip side, Cameron – From a low point, what's been one of the proudest moments for you? Um, I think the proudest moments is probably that I really control my time. You know, I've gone to 21 countries in the last five years with my wife. Um, I've taken about eight to ten weeks vacation every year with the kids and my wife. Um, That I really have built something that has given me the life that I've always wanted. Um, It used to be, you know, press that I've landed or success or milestones and I think now it's about the fact that I've like experiences lived, I've created experiences and I've created yeah. the time what was one of those travels that you just pinched yourself that you realized that you you have that luxury of, of doing what you do and traveling in, in the time um, well there were two one was in January of this year I was over in Qatar and I was coaching the sheik who runs the country owns the country really um, so that was <laughs> that's <one>. amazing um, <laughs> Yeah, I coach a monarchy. and then I read uh, that in your site, and I meant to ask, yeah, I'm like, what does that mean, you coach a monarchy? Yeah. So, yeah, it's an absolute monarchy, the only country. Wow. And then, um, but the last summer, my wife and girls and I went to Europe for um, three weeks, and we did, you know, a week in Amsterdam, and a week in France, and a week in London, and a week in Barcelona. I guess we were there for four weeks, and just completely disconnected. Um, you know, it didn't, didn't work, and just got to travel and enjoy and live, so... Those kinds of trips, I think, are pretty amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Um, Cameron, what are some of the daily rituals that you think are most important that other people should think about employing for themselves also? Well, one is definitely the, the top five idea. You yeah. Know, setting your daily goals so yeah. that you work with critical few things versus the important many. Yeah. Um, just taking the time to de-stress on that daily basis to have the ritual of stopping work. Um, you know, you can't work nights, you can't work weekends. Yeah. Um, and having a daily ritual of disconnecting and doing something fun, whether it's going for a run or reading a book or spending time with your yeah. friends or family. Yeah. I mean, I don't do enough meditation. I just did finish doing a course in transcendental meditation, mm. but um, meditation and yoga are certainly great for balancing and, and disconnecting it. Yeah. Cameron, I just want to thank you. This has been fantastic. Uh, where should we point people towards to make sure they check out online? Yeah, if they go to CameronHerolds.com, and it's H-E-R-O-L-D.com, or like you mentioned on Amazon or iTunes or Audible, they can get copies of Double Double or Meetings Suck. Um, that would be great. Check out CameronHerold.com, Double Double, fantastic on Audible or Amazon. Cameron, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Jeremy, it was fun. This is a great interview. I really appreciate the time yeah, today. Thank you. Come on. See ya. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand